guaranteed fucking win every day of the week. Like there's a power to that. There's a force to that. That that's just a, like think about it now. Just if it, it feels just awesome knowing that that there's always a win, no matter how fucked up everything is. If you train every day, you're always getting a win. You're always getting better. You're always one step closer to self mastery. What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Steve Eckert Show podcast, episode number four. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into why and how I train every single day. That's right. No days off, 365 days a year of training. The good, the bad, the reasoning behind it, some stories, some examples. We're going to go deep into it about how that's possible or if it's even possible. We're going to break it down here for you today on the Steve Eckert Show podcast episode number four. The Steve Eckert Show is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are present preventing your success, showing you how to operate to dominate in your mind, body, business, your family, your fitness, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms while you create your personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. This is all about transforming men and women from where they are to where they want to be, need to be, and fucking deserve to be. So again, today we are talking about the no days off. The why do I train every day? And I get a lot of people talk shit about it and all the so-called experts out there and some people that actually are experts that have some great valid points about why maybe it's not recommended for most people. That's what I'm throwing there. For most people, and why it's, it's, it's working for me and the Freak family. Because here's how it all started. In the beginning of 2022, I think it was. We already, didn't, we already took off. I think off 2021, we took off. This is during the corona. We took maybe, maybe 10 days off the entire year. Maybe 15 max. When all the shutdowns and lockdowns and everything was all shut down and closed in 2021 and even 2020. Maybe 15 days off a year. If that. If that. So 2022 came along. We made a goal for the year. All right, we're going to take zero days off, me and Tyson. So he was, I was 44 at the time. He was 10. So we said we're going to take zero days off for 2022. And that was the goal we set. And guess what? We fucking accomplished it. Like literally, we tried to work out for 365 days straight, a 44-year-old and a 10-year-old through sickness, broken bones, deaths in the family, and we succeeded. And that was in 20. 22, and here we are in the middle of 2023 and still haven't taken a day off since. I don't even remember the last day I took a day off even before that, but it's been a minimum now of of 500 days for me and Tyson, who's now 11, and I'm now 21. So, and we, we have a game. We make it a game. We have fun with it. We, we basically try to convince each other to take a day off or, or talk the other one into, oh, just take a day off. Take a rest. You need it. You look like you need it. Just talking shit. Just having fun. Just teasing each other with it. Making a game out of it because we know it's just not going to happen. And I, I can't understand. I can't understand when there's, there's people who you ask them about their routine or I'll be talking to someone on a, on a sales call that's looking for some one-on-one private coaching, some personal discipline and development coaching. They're looking to get into the OTD coaching world or maybe looking to get into the project, the personal development program that we hold here in California, a four-day in-person program for men. And when I get into the fitness part, ask them how, how often they work out. And they'll say, oh, I work out three to four times a week or two to three times a week. Like I can never wrap my head around that. Like what the fuck were you doing those other days that you're two to three times a week and you're wondering why you have a a fucking gut or man tits and you work out two to three times a week or wondering why you're not fit and ripped and standing out. Like when when you're, when you're going to the, to the beach or, or going in the gym, you just stand out. Like you almost feel bad for the other people because you're in such good shape. And if you're not there and you're working out two to three times a week, you fucking wonder why. So with us taking zero days off, I'm talking about no days off. And we're not talking about just half-assing it and bullshitting. Yeah, there's days where the intensity are higher and lower, but it is fucking training every day. It is a minimum of 60 minutes per day. And the majority of the days, I'll say 75, 80% of the days, it's two 
two and a half. If you count warm ups and cool downs and, and cardio and stretching, we're talking two hours, two and a half hours. Today was combined with like sauna and recovery and stretching and all that it was like three hours and 16 minutes today from start to finish. Now that's everything in between and in the sauna and even on the cardio bike. And in the recovery room, in the, in the UFC gym, the recovery room, they use the Norman Tech where they do the recovery on the legs and the hips and the hamstrings and all that. We're working. So we're getting work done while we're doing this also. So it's like a force multiplier. Riding on an exercise bike for 20, 30 minutes after we're done lifting just to hit some cardio. But while we're on the bike and getting some work done, doing a social media post, planning the, actually plan part of this podcast, recording today on a bike and in a sauna. So we are maximizing the time, weaponizing that time. So you're, you're, it's, it's a fucking force multiplier. So when we're training, we're getting so much other shit done at the same time, just to make that clear that it's, yeah, three hours and 16 minutes from start to finish, but so much other shit was going on during that time, like maximum use of time. So again, I can't understand how people just train two, three, three to four, even four to five days a week. I could see maybe in, for some people on some programs, one, to two max days off per week. That's just for the, for the general population. But we're going to go into why we decide to train every motherfucking day. And it starts with, really starts as a mental game. It starts, it's not even physical. The physical part's the easy part. It's a mental game. Yeah, it's physical, but it's also mental and emotional freaking therapy. It's, that's what mental toughness is. Combining the physical, the mental, and the emotional. And this, it's, like, it's like our therapy. It's like, it's, it's a fucking needed. We just, we literally need to train every day. But even on a higher level than that, this is a, a step towards self-mastery, just never ending improvement, always getting better. Having Think about this. If you know you're going to train every day, you can't. It, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to have a bad fucking day. You're getting a win every day. It's guaranteed. If everything else goes sideways, the universe fucking bitch slaps you or kicks you in the nuts, and your day just goes to shit, but you got your training session in, you got to win. You're getting, we know that we're getting away. We're getting a win. Guaranteed fucking win every day of the week. Like there's a power to that. There's a force to that. That That's just like, think about now. Just, it, it feels just awesome knowing that, that there's always a win. No matter how fucked up everything is. If you train every day, you're always getting a win. You're always getting better. You're always one step closer to self-mastery. And Let's take it now into a, another level. It's, it's not about when it comes to training. We're going to go into the recovery part in a second, but it's not about what you're gaining. And get, yes, we're getting better. We're getting strong. We like to be well-rounded. We're getting stronger. We're getting faster. We're getting more flexible. We're getting more conditioning, more endurance. But it's not even about gaining that. Yes, we are gaining that. But on a deeper level, almost the, the reverse of that, it's not about what we're gaining. It's about what we're getting rid of, what we're distre- defeating, what we're fucking destroying. We are literally every day killing that inner bitch because, well, we, we never really have the day where we're like, oh, I don't feel like working out. I can, that's a side note. That's one thing I can't fucking stand. When you see motherfuckers go on the internet and, and they go with this little motivational morning message and they're like, oh, you know, I'm just like you. Some days I really don't feel like working out. Like today I didn't want to work out and I did my workout anyway. Like, Good for you, motherfucker. You worked out when you were supposed to, or you already planned to, and you did what you planned to do, and now what? You want a fucking cookie or a rainbow sticker or a little pat on the back so you could feel good about yourself that, oh, boo-hoo, I didn't feel like working out, and I did. Oh, what a fucking hero you are. Like, it's, but anyway, that's just getting me sidetracked as I'm starting to think about that because I saw someone post that today early in the morning on, on Instagram. Oh, I didn't really feel like it. I didn't feel like getting out of bed. Motherfucker, if you didn't feel like getting out of bed, you need to reevaluate your whole fucking existence. If you had trouble getting out of bed and peeling myself off the mattress and I wanted to stand under the warm covers, wake the fuck up, motherfucker. Anyway, so that's, what, that's why I train every day to overcome that inner bitch that, that you see out there that, we're, that I'm even explaining that, that type of mentality. It's a mental toughness thing. Again, it's not what I'm gaining. It's what I'm getting rid of. Killing that inner bitch on a regular basis. Killing the negativity or the vices or the other bad habits you might have. If I'm tra- at the gym every day, training every day, I mean 60 minutes minimum, but it's you know two, two and a half, three hours sometimes, there's not much time or energy to go get in trouble elsewhere or do other stupid stuff or waste time. And then during that time, as I mentioned, we're also being productive with that time and actually making money during that time, creating shit during that time. But it's also, again, when it's not about gaining shit, it's about getting rid of stuff. It's about getting rid of killing complacency. It's about killing 
that inner bitch, killing laziness, killing the motherfucking excuses that you have. And it's also about getting rid of in the, in the sense of releasing, releasing that energy you have, releasing that built up testosterone and, and anxiety and whatever else you want to call it, that fear, that pain, that fucking hate and rage that's built into you as a fucking man that you just have to release. You need to release that shit in one way or another every motherfucking day. What better way than slanging some motherfucking steel? Going to do some death circuits where you can't even, you don't even know where the fuck you are anymore. Like doing, doing your sets till the, the muscles peeling off the fucking bone. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're getting rid of. That's what we're releasing. That's what we're fucking killing. And when you start operating this way, it's, and you're done with your training, it's just preparing you for anything that day. For the, the, the rest of your day is going to be easy. You do this and train every day. The rest of your day is easy. You've, you've gotten the win. You've killed all these demons and inner bitch that's inside of you. You're prepared for anything. That rest of that freaking day. You're prepared for the invasion. You're prepared for the end of the world, the fucking apocalypse. I'm telling you, the invasion is fucking coming. Or the, the invasion is probably, it, it's basically fucking here already. And you know what? I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be durable. When the invasion happens, there are going to be no motherfucking days off. On, in wartime, there are no motherfucking days off. In the real world, in life, there's no days off. There's no days off from being a husband. No days off from being a father, being a leader, being a human, being a motherfucking man. There are no days off. So I'm going to remain ready, remain prepared, remain fucking sharp. Because training every day, when it comes down to it, to the deepest like level, of foundational level, the deepest like essence of it is the rawest form of fucking discipline you can have. Getting yourself to do that every single day, even on the days you don't want to and you want to get in your little fucking warm pillows and all this other bullshit. Like that is the rawest form of discipline. It's just becomes part of your DNA, part of who the fuck you are, what you stand for, your character, your culture. The cult, it's a culture of our family. It's the character of who we, the fu- who, who we are. It's just part of the routine. It's like the rhythm of life and the rhythm of the day and the beats of the day. Like every day revolves around when the workout's going to happen. Literally, that's what determines the day. Of course, there's other times with traveling and stuff like that, and, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But in general, a regular day revolves around when the workout's going to be. We even have family meetings on our schedule, and we break down what time and where and who and who is going with and what type of workout it is for the entire week. So we are ready. We know what it is, and it's fucking nothing is going to get in the way of that. Nothing's going to get in the way of that. There was a time when I, when I used to sell, be, the, be the salesman for the project. And I was selling it, calling up men, signing them up for the project. I had my assistant. She, she messaged me one day. She's like, and, and I don't take calls on Fridays. It's free Freedom Friday. I don't take any sales calls. I don't do any coaching calls. I don't put any specific hard things on the calendar. So my assistant said, there's this, there's this dude. He's ready to sign up. For, this is a couple of years ago. He's ready to sign up for the project. But he can only meet on Friday at 11 a.m. And, but he's ready to go. He's ready to sign up. I don't want to lose him. This is only, he said, he's very busy very busy, successful entrepreneur can only meet specifically this time. I know, I mean, I checked my calendar just to double check, but I know that that's part of the time I'm in the gym on Friday. I told her, tell him I am unavailable at that time. I have a prior engagement, a prior meeting locked in the schedule, and I cannot meet with him. Yes, I turned down a, a guaranteed, supposedly guaranteed sale. You know nothing's guaranteed till the fucking ink dries and the credit card has been processed. But a guaranteed sale I turned down because I had a meeting. I had a meeting with my motherfucking self at the gym because if I start breaking down, start breaking those promises to myself, start breaking that discipline, where else am I going to start slipping up? Where else am I going to give up on myself for a fucking dollar? Think about that. And you know what happened? He, I, he, she told me I wasn't available that, that day and that time. We scheduled it for Saturday morning when I had a two-hour time block that I was taking calls at the time on Saturday mornings. And the motherfucker signed up for the project. Simple as that. Like That's how serious and ruthless you have to be with yourself and your time and your training. That's how it has to be. And nothing can get in the way of that. It is a non-negotiable. It is a daily motherfucking discipline. And let's switch gears onto it about, all right, what are some of the reasons why? Well, first, it's like a connection. This is a connection, a deep level of connection. There is no better way to get to know someone, to bond with someone, to connect with someone, whether it's family or friends or whatever, than when you're training together. When you're doing hard shit together, you're pushing each other and pressuring each other and giving fist bumps and hitting fucking PRs and all that other stuff. Tyson just hit a PR today of, of 
he weighs 100 pounds or 103 pounds. He did 85 pound bench press on a bar. And this is only three weeks into him actually doing bench press with a bar. Hit a PR of 108, not 185 pounds, 85 pounds. Imagine he did 185, fucking freak show. 85 pounds, that's 85% of his body weight for two clean reps and then like three and four with just fingertips worth of help. Like afterwards, there's a fist bump. There's a, we're feeling pumped. We're, we're flexing the chesticles and all this other stuff. Like what deeper, better way of connection can you have? And that was just a, a, a meathead weightlifting session. Then that, you talk about connecting on real hard suffering workouts. We'll talk about that here in a second. And sometimes they're outdoors. Sometimes they're with friends. Sometimes they're with family. Sometimes they're with clients or sometimes all that together. What a force multiplier use of your time where you could combine all that shit together where you're training with friends and family and clients and potential clients and prospects. And it's social time. It's family time. It's training time. It's outdoor time. You're getting in some sun. Like what up? What up? You can't get a much better use of your time than that. Other than the fact of training every day is it just feels fucking, fucking good. And it just feels right. It feels right. It feels wrong if we don't train. It feels right if we do. If something feels good, it feels good, it feels right if it gets done. It feels bad, it feels wrong if it doesn't get done. You know it's good for you. It's not like you're a cokehead and it feels good and it feels right because you're so fucking addicted to coke. But for training, it feels good. It feels fucking right. Hell yeah, I'm going to fucking do it every day. If it feels good and it feels right, why would I not do it? Why would I intentionally not do it? That's the way we operate in our fucking head. That's why we train every freaking day. And when this is going on, let's talk about the, the next C. We talked about connection. Creativity. When you're training, the body, blood is flowing. The endorphins are up. There's dopamine hits. It's just all kinds of, it's like a chemical concoction. Testosterone is pumping and flowing. You're, you're releasing all kinds of, of, of negative. You're in, feeling good and right, like we just said. That sparks so much freaking creativity. I literally have made literally millions of dollars that have been generated during workout time. Now, that doesn't mean I'm training during workout time. I'm not taking sales calls. I'm not writing emails. It is uninterrupted. None of that shit is going on during workout time. It is a sacred fucking time. There might be some social media stuff or posts or like tags or, or, or stories or live videos and creating content while we're actually training, but there's no, no actual business. But I've literally made millions of dollars from working out because it sparks the creativity. Some different weird shit goes on in your, in your body and all the chemicals going through your body. I've, I've solved problems. I've made decisions. Sometimes I have to take some notes because some shit just gets sparked into your head in the middle of some crazy ass circuit. And you don't even know where the fuck it came from. It came from like the, some higher power, or some higher calling. You don't know where the fuck it came from. Solutions surface in the suffering. Superpowers surface in the fucking suffering. I'm going to say those again. I want you to write that shit down. Solutions surface in the suffering. And then your superpowers surface in the suffering. If that's not enough reason right there, like if I know that that's what's happening and that type of creativity and that kind of power and force is happening, fuck yeah, I want to work out every day. Some days, two days, two times a day. And, and, and as I said, we're making, creating content. We're taking pictures. We're doing videos. We're doing posts, both that we're going to use for content for business, but also just for ourselves, just to keep for our memories. We're creating memories as a, as a family with your friends for yourself and you're remembering the time you did this, the time you did this kind of crazy ass workout, whatever it is. We're making it fun. We're turning it into a game. It's keeping us on our fucking A game. It's keeping us sharp, keeping us alert and awake, keeping us fucking ready and focused, focused and just mentally dialed in and laser beam fucking focused. And again, we, we spend hours a day at the gym sometimes, hours, like multiple, today over three hours. But that's our lifestyle. That's our family culture. On the way there, we're listening to books, having conversation. The way back, we're listening to books, having conversation. During the workout, we're creating content, taking pictures and videos. We're doing recovery and stretching and working on, on recovery right there before, during, and after the actual training session. So this stuff is, is it's just a force multiplier of time. And Another reason why we do this is you know why? Because most of you motherfuckers can't and most of you motherfuckers won't. It's a, it's a, it's a, mentally for us, it's a competitive edge because most motherfuckers can't keep up. They won't have the bandwidth to do this, to train for hours a day, but still be successful, but still spend time with their family and still have that work-life chemistry and work-life symmetry and alignment and fulfillment and happiness and, and, and fucking domination. We're also doing it just to show that it's fucking possible, that it's possible, even 
when we're busy, even when we're traveling or sick, fe- ru- doing stuff with the family, running several businesses, deaths in the family. We literally, we, we were in New York in a hotel the day of my father's funeral. This was just last year. We're in the hotel. We woke up extra early just to get a workout. And even the day of a funeral, the day of a death, we're not going to miss a fucking workout for anything. We've all had the Corona viruses and all this other stuff probably multiple times between headaches and, and little sniffles and sneezes and all that other shit and throats and all this other stuff that you get out there when you're, when you're doing jujitsu and when the kids used to go to school, none of that stopped it. No matter what, it doesn't matter how bad the headache is. It doesn't matter how tired you are, how little sleep you got to know that you're still going to have that mental toughness and discipline to still go through and get a real serious fucking training session in, there is a power to that. Knowing that nothing can fucking stop you. It makes you feel bulletproof, impenetrable, unmotherfucking stoppable and showing it's possible. We've worked out in airports. We've worked out at home before we had to catch a flight where we woke up at 2 a.m. just to get a workout in because we knew we'd be traveling all day. We've worked out on layovers where there were delays in the airport where we trained right there at the fucking gate waiting for it. We've worked out at 11 p.m. before the clock strikes midnight because in order for it to count, it has to be during it in that, in that actually daily calendar. No motherfucking excuses. That's why it's tattooed on my arm so it's never forgotten. Knowing that we're living with no excuse every day, what a fucking force of power, what a discipline, what a, what a, a, a power and an energy and a force that we're, we're injecting into the universe every fucking day. Just thinking about it gets my, my blood flowing, makes me want to go do another workout. We already did over three hours today. I want to go get some more. We, we will not let, there's no excuse, we won't let anything fucking stop us. We, one time we were working out, Tyson and I together collaboratively dropped a 100 pound, I thought it was a 50, but he reminded me, it was a 100 pound dumbbell, direct hit on my pinky toe, completely fucking obliterated, crushed it, like almost disintegrated the pinky toe. We didn't stop that workout. I jumped up literally right there and said, you know, that weight just broke my toe. My toe is completely broken right now. But you know what? I got this fucking pull-up bar I'm looking at. Hopped up on the pull-up bar. And I think I banged out 14 pulls, remember, on that exact set. With a toe that's fucking smushed like a motherfucking pancake. We didn't take any days off after that with a broken toe. We actually had a 24-hour challenge coming up. A 24-hour hike that I had to do in sandals and flip-flops most of it because my foot, the broken toe, couldn't even fit into a pair of sneakers or definitely not hiking boots. So we did a 24-hour challenge where we worked, we hiked for 24 hours straight. We did a Suffering Saturday workout. Literally the next Saturday, we had a, a, every once in a while, once a month, to try to have a group workout at our house called Suffering Saturday where it's like just over-the-top, intense savagery going on right down the middle of the road. I can't imagine why none of the, the fucking neighbors invite us over for, for tea and biscuits or whatever the fuck I call it. We're out there in the middle of the road on, on a Saturday, just suffering Saturday workout. And with a, a toe that was just raw, fresh, and just newly broken, and pushing a sled up the hill on these torture rounds, doing these heavy kettlebell farmer, farmer, farmer carries up the hill for hundreds of yards with these flip-flops, with a broken fucking toe, nothing will stop it. We did the 24-hour hike with a broken toe. The human body... Is, is fucking capable of so much more than you know, so much more than we even believe in our head, and so much more than we even fucking understand. It is so fucking capable, and we baby it and do all this other bullshit it. And now that I'm telling you, there's not, there is a place for recovery, but we, we bullshit, and oh, I need a break. Here's, here's one interesting thing I've noticed about, like, so let's say you're, you have a, a day off scheduled, a rest day scheduled for your workout. Motherfuckers are always so disciplined on their rest days. They will never miss a rest day. They will be so diligent and disciplined 100%. They will never miss a fucking rest day. But if something comes up and throws their schedule off during a day they were supposed to train and they miss it, they say, oh, this happened. Oh, my flight got delayed. Oh, there was a death in the family. Oh, I had the little sniffles and little boogie was coming out of my fucking nose. Oh, I had a migraine. My head hurt. They'll find every fucking reason and all those things will let them miss a work day, a training day, but they'll never miss a fucking rest day. It's really odd how they're very disciplined with the motherfucking rest days and never as disciplined with the training days. So that leads us into the recovery. Now I get told by people and usually it's by fat people that it's not good for you. You're, what are you doing to yourself? You're doing too much. The kid's doing too much. You should be taking days off. 
whatever else. It's going to lower your testosterone. It's going to lower your energy. It's going to give you injuries. You're going to be overtraining and, and whatever else. Well, we're a couple of years in. I'm 45 years old now. I feel fucking awesome. The only injuries are from actual injuries like doing stupid shit like in jujitsu or whatever else or dropping shit on your toes, but overuse injuries and whatever else. From some of the 24-hour challenges, there's sometimes some strains or chronic things that come back because we do those ridiculous 24-hour workouts. It's just those are the times that the, yeah, or it's overuse, but that's, we choose to do that. That is voluntary suffering. We love that shit. We have another one coming up, but we recover every day. We, first of all, have, have a positive mental attitude around it. We stretch and warm up properly every day. We stay hydrated and try and eat as healthy as possible every day with no cheat days and no bullshit, no garbage foods. We try to get as much sleep as possible. I get more than seven hours of sleep every night, except maybe on a rare occasion if we're having some big event or extra crazy or whatever it is. But on an average day, over 80% of the time, I'm getting over seven hours of sleep. 7.15, 7.5, I'll say is the average. That's recovery right there. See, people do all this other stuff and then sleep four or five hours. And then, yeah, of course you need a fucking day off because you feel like shit. You're not hydrating enough. You're not eating good enough. You're drinking fucking alcohol or whatever other shit you're putting into your body. You're stressed out like motherfucking crazy. We're meditating every day. We're journaling every day. We're having deep, meaningful conversations every day. That's all part of recovery because the mental and emotional side of recovery is just as important as the physical side. So we are hitting that stuff literally just as often as the workout. So we're doing all that stuff every single fucking day and it allows us to have that power, that force, that fucking energy to train every day. We are working on recovery literally every fucking day. And when we're training every day, like think it's just something that keeps you accountable, something to light a fire under your ass, to push you and press you every day, knowing that you have a challenge every day. Every morning I ask myself, what's something I can get excited about today? And almost every day, I can include in the training session in addition to whatever else is getting me excited about. But to ha- know that you're having that, that challenge, you're doing hard shit every day. Like that is what I call fucking growth. That is what I call self-mastery. Doing hard shit every day. That's what I call fucking an awesome day. Knowing that you're going to do something that's, yeah, a little bit of fun, but also a little bit of fearful, but it's going to challenge you. It's going to push you. It's going to pressure you. Fuck yes, yeah, sign me up. Why would I not want to feel that? Why would I not want to experience that every day? It's getting me fired up just thinking about it. We are meant to move. We are meant to suffer. We are meant to challenge ourselves. We are meant to struggle on a daily basis. That's what we're created for. We're built for this shit. We're made for this shit. We need this shit. And then even onto a a deeper level, on a level of, of gratitude. Yeah, I still train every day. You know why, motherfucker? Because I can. Because I still have it in me. I'm still able to. I'm fucking alive. I'm breathing. I'm feeling. I'm moving. You know who can't train every day? You know who can't train every fucking day? A dead motherfucker can't train every day. That's who can't train every day. That's who can't work out. While I can move my body and my limbs, and as I'm able, if as long as I'm able to, I will train every fucking day until the day I die. Until I could be in, even in the hospital. Me and Tyson, we, we joke about it that even if we forget, I get run over by a truck, you better sit there and and take my arm and give me like a one pound dumbbell and make me do some kind of workout in the hospital bed, even if I'm in a motherfucking coma. After I got hernia surgery in 1997. When I was stationed in Japan, they shipped me out to a small little island, a Navy base in in Japan, and I had to get hernia surgery. And they didn't even let the doctors do the surgery. They had their interns practicing. The Navy's doctor, they would learn to become doctors by practicing on Marines in some fucking far off island in, and this is a true story. This is the late 90s, 97, 98 maybe. So I got hernia surgery. After that, I was fucked. I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even move. But there was, I was damned if I was going to lose all my fucking progress and hard work. I literally, if you know the tubes that you put your toothbrush in when you're traveling and, and the tube is like see-through and it splits in half and you put your toothbrush in and you put the two pieces over your toothbrush to travel. I literally broke, took those two pieces of that in my hands like two dumbbells and I was laying there in the hospital bed doing bicep curls with this empty case, two halves of the case of the toothpaste. And that was a fucking struggle. But I said, you know what? I'm going to fucking do something. I'm going to stay in shape. I need to fucking train. I need to feel better about myself. I need to get the blood flowing to my body to help the recovery process happen, to build up the immunity, to make myself fucking bulletproof. Because I'm not dead yet, motherfucker. And dead people can't work out. And I am not fucking dead yet. And listen, there's a, a lot worse things you could be addicted to than training, food and drugs and alcohol and whatever else. That shit is for soft, weak men. Because if it wasn't a, a, an addiction to this, it's going to be an addiction to something else. So, you know, if the worst thing that happens in a day 
is that I trained without taking a day off. That's a pretty good motherfucking day. If you think about it, not taking a break from working out, that's a pretty good day. If that's the worst thing you did all day, hell yeah, it feels fucking right. Hell yeah, it feels fucking good. Because I don't believe in having bad days. And missing a workout would make it feel like a bad day. But getting the workout ensures that it's a good day. I don't believe in having a bad day. What if you had 24 hours to live? 24 hours to live. Wouldn't you want to feel good? Do what feels right? Hell yeah. If I knew it was my last day on this fucking planet, I would get a training session in. What if I die today? Do I want my last day to be a day off? Or a rest day? Or an average day or a cheat day, a day I'm fucking half-assing? Hell no, I'm going out with a motherfucking bang. It will be a day that I got a training session in. I could tell you that. I'm not going to be eating a bunch of shitty food. Why would I want to go out on a cheat day or feel slow and sluggish or feel like a fat bastard on my last day? Go out feeling guilty for missing something, going out knowing that's, that's how you went out. You went on a day off, on a rest day, on a cheat day? Fuck that. Not me, motherfucker. And here's one of the Main reasons why I train every day and go against all the experts, all the experts all over the social media. You know why? Because I just fucking want to. I just fucking want to. There's no days I'm not motivated to work out. No days that I don't feel like it. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. The next day I don't feel like working out, I'll take a day off. Deal? Mr. Online, Instagram, social media, internet fucking experts. The day that I don't want to, I will take a day off. I promise you that. But as long as I want to, that's more than enough reason for me, motherfucker, to train every single day. And once you realize, stop telling yourself the thing. Yeah, you could tell yourself to get you through certain things. Pain is temporary. The pain is only temporary. Or people say pain is just weakly leaving the body. Pain is temporary. I want you to take that to the next level. We like to take everything. We like to freakify everything here on the Steve Eckert podcast. I want you to start thinking pain is permanent, motherfucker. Imagine if you just realize pain is permanent. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be suffering and hardship and sacrifice because nothing of any great significance, no any goal or successful person has ever achieved it without a significant level of hardship and suffering and sacrifice and a whole lot of motherfucking pain. And the second you can accept that, that pain is fucking permanent, you become unstoppable. You become impenetrable. You become motherfucking bulletproof. You become awesome. And you just have awesome days and fucking awesomer days. And if I'm awesomer, it's not a word it is now, motherfucker. So these are the reasons why we train every single day. And I think I pleaded a very, a pretty good case about why it's not only okay, it's not only possible and doable, you could still thrive and improve and get better and stronger and more conditioned. We're not staying the same. We are not worried about staying average. We are not staying mediocre. We are not just maintaining by training every day. We are getting better every motherfucking day. That is the journey in this life is self-mastery is getting better, never ending, constant, never ending fucking improvement. And by training every day, it's a guaranteed win and guaranteed growth every fucking day. Hope that makes sense to you because it makes sense to me in my fucking head. Thank you for joining me on this episode, episode number four of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. I will see you next time. Just make sure if this message resonated with you, go check out the other episodes. Make sure you like and subscribe and share with the motherfucker that needs to hear this message. Leave some comments down below. Let me know about what does your routine look like? How many days do you take off? And what do you think about the things I'm talking about, about not needing to take a day off? Am I fucking stupid? Does it make sense? Let me know what you think. I will see you next time. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.